Welcome to Let's Rap. I am Derek Carr, I'm your host, and this is Ebony Ingram Jones, is one of our co-hosts, and our lovely other co-host is Lisa Crutcher Thurman. Mm -hmm. So tonight, and Let's Rap, our theme is always, we have practical conversations about things to help us in life, well-being, things to make us better, and we tie Jesus all in it. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do, and we have a serious conversation about that. So tonight, as we talk through ideals, tonight Lisa is gonna share her testimony or her story about her it's a, her brain uh, surgeries that she's had and through that situation there's several lessons that she has learned through that so she's going to share those lessons tonight and then what we're going to do we're going to wrap so she'll tell us a little bit about the lesson what she learned through the experience after she shares her quick testimony then we'll go and we'll just discuss and then you see how you fit in mm -hmm. and we always going to add the lord so lisa tell us how tell us a little bit about this situation well i'm have hydrocephalus, which is like would have been a waterhead baby. But I wasn't diagnosed till I was 19. But since then, I've had five brain surgeries. And the third one, um, I, um, by it, I have a shunt in my head. And it, my neurosurgeon said it's like anything mechanical. It can last for five days or 50 years. I am on a 50 year program this time. <laughs> but Absolutely. You know, it hadn't been, I didn't have that one, but I want to say seven years and then it, it collapsed for whatever reason. My shunt collapsed and when, it, I don't say it's like a brain aneurysm, but it, it affects the brain, it's overload of fluid within okay. the brain. And so it shut down and I was in a coma uh, for three days, totally comatose. Wow. But the neurosurgeon says like six months that I was going through stages. There are nine stages of coma. And that I could, I was telling, see you right now, if you were in my long-term memory, because it affected my short-term memory bad. If you were in long-term, I knew you from back in the day, I would see you, we could, hey, how you doing? And talk about it, everything, and walk away, come back, <sighs> dang, we could have the same conversation. My short-term memory was so bad. Wow. And wow. Frazier Rehab is the place. They went with me back when I finally went. I was at Frazier for three months. And then they went back with me to my classroom. I had to take the driver's evaluation all over again. And, you know, I had to learn proper stuff again. Because there was no filter. Mm -hmm. If I said it, it came out. If I thought it, I said it. And um, there's several lessons that I learned. And I have this article that I just made copies of. It's published in the BIOC, Brain Injury Association of Kentucky. And I told Derek, I said, I'd like to share. We do practical information and sharing Absolutely. life experiences. So I wanted to share this with you all. Uh, lesson number one, these are in no particular order. But I learned to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, and I, I'm sure through that process, that was crazy. Cause I think all of us have been experienced some type of sickness, yeah, illness, yeah. or some catastrophic event in our life. Um, and you have to give people the benefit yes, of the doubt. Yes. And like, even these days with the pandemic and things that are going on, you don't know who can't pay their bills. Right, right. You don't know who can't do a lot of things. You don't know who's heartbroken. Right. You don't know what's going on emotionally. Cause we like packages. We look right. really nice, oh, we wrapped right. up, yeah, we look yeah. amazing. But you don't know what's in there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even when you shake it, mm -hmm. you don't know. It's just, it's all kind of ugly mm -hmm. things that, and idiosyncrasies that we have, and things we show. You really do have to give people the benefit. You do, of even driving. You, you're trying to get someone, someone cut you off or something. It's okay. They may have to use it, have to go to the restroom real bad. Or somebody might be sick. They're trying mm -hmm. to get to them. Or they've already been late two times that week. Boss say you do it again, you're going to be fired. So they got to hurry up. Mm -hmm. So just. Slow down, yeah. give them, let, let them in. That explains, I've always, well, since we began recording this show, yeah. I've always thought, Miss Lisa really is empathetic. Yeah. She always, like, even without us having specific conversations, she's always saying, consider the other person. Yeah. You never know what they are going through. And that helps because, like you said, we get so wrapped up and tied mm -hmm. up in what we're doing we just fly off the handle without 
considering the other person. So it's amazing how your brain injury, even though it was awful, right. really helped you to oh become a better person. Yeah. Um, yes, it that, really, really has. That, that's a good point mm -hmm. because a lot of times we we always worried about what's in it for us mm -hmm. or what affects mm -hmm. us. Correct. And we don't know. What, and then the thing with what I want to do, okay. what I want my practice to be, mm -hmm. and I can't speak for anybody else, is to really learn this lesson. When you mm -hmm. sent this to us earlier and I looked at it, you know, I really have to learn how to give people the benefit yeah. of the doubt. Yeah. You know, it's really more important than just saying that because you do not know yeah. what people are facing. Mm -hmm. You don't know what they're facing at home. Right. You don't, you don't know what they think of themselves. Mm -hmm. You don't know any of that. And then what Ebony brought up another good point is you have to learn how to be empathetic and if you haven't experienced that situation then you need to be sympathetic mm -hmm. right because you correct. don't know right. correct you just don't know mm -hmm. you, and even if you do know it might have said still, you absolutely, yeah. correct. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. you can't assume that the way it affects you is right. going to be the absolutely. same for you you know absolutely. i don't because i remember being sick too and i remember being extremely sick right. Right. and i i didn't know what was going to happen mm -hmm. and i got to a point where you know what i didn't care no more i just wanted to live Mm -hmm. I didn't care what people thought. <laughs> exactly. I didn't care what they said. Exactly. I don't care how I looked. Right. I just wanted to get closer to Christ because I knew he was the one right. who was going to be able to correct the situation. Yes, yes. So by any means necessary, yes. I wanted to be a follower yes. of yes. Christ yes. and make it even closer to him mm -hmm. than I could possibly be because I knew my healing was with him. Mm -hmm. Now, whether he healed me on this side Come on. or whether he healed me on the other side, I knew I needed a healing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you have to make up in your mind. So thank you for that lesson. What was your second one? It was, I learned that addictions are real. Mm. They really are. And my addiction, I was addicted to Hostess King Dongs. Mm. I had to have them every single day. And my Uncle Jimmy, bless his heart, he bought me a box Aww. every single day. I ate a whole box of Hostess Kingdom. Aww. And with my disinhibition, I mean, like I said, whatever I thought came out. So my mama took them and put them away. I cut, ooh, the word I said to her, because I was going to tear that booger up. And with nobody going to eat nothing till I got there. I mean, and so that let me see how. You know, drug addicts, when you feel that your body yes. has to have it, and I was completely addicted to those hostess kingdoms. You can't tell me that people that are on crack or that heroin and all that, mm -hmm. it's it's powerful. Yeah. Wow. It's powerful, and you will do what you yeah. got to do to get it. Yeah. But I did. I prayed and asked God to take that away from me, and I can look at a box now won't even touch it. Yeah. I'm, wow. That is so amazing mm -hmm. to me because I'm telling you, I had to have an AK. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, I looked at that lesson and now that you said it and when, when I read this earlier and I was like, Lisa's just being Lisa. No way in the world that was that deep. But I mean, just hearing you no. verbalize that and say it, it is possible. And then another thing that goes back to empathy mm -hmm. and sympathy mm -hmm. because it's so easy to say, what somebody is or what they're mm. doing when you don't deal with that struggle. Absolutely. And I promise you, if you're not addicted to King Dong Say or whatever, it. you're addicted to something. It's something with your name <laughs> on it. Right. And it's whether it's <laughs> right. the caught and the uncaught. Mm. You know, I'm going to look at that. So, yeah. There's a whole lot of things mm. that we do that are accepted things mm -hmm. that, to be addicted of and then certain things we frown upon people or we shame them mm -hmm. or we make them feel less than Correct. but it was a situation that happened that got them to that point mm -hmm. to make them try something that now they can't they feel like they can't shake mm -hmm. and they really can't unless they have Christ's help exactly and this is what, what this is really teach this is really important because these are practical mm -hmm. principles that we just need to use every day in order to live better mm -hmm. than we are living now Right. Uh, because you can't judge. You really can't. It's one judge. Yeah. The word says, judge not lest ye be judged. Yeah. There is one seat, and he it's already filled. It don't need no administrative assistant. Yeah. It don't need nobody to back it up. Mm -hmm. right. And we just really need to be really take compassion towards other people. Because mm -hmm. addictions are real. Yes. And I know we all got that yes. uncle, mm -hmm. that brother, yeah. that yeah. cousin, mm -hmm. somebody in our family mm -hmm. that may be addicted to drugs or something else. And I know there might be a jump, but addiction is addiction. Mm, it is. And whatever. And I think it's important to note that it's not a jump because she's saying it was a result of a Absolutely. brain injury. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That within itself is showing you those types of chemical dependencies yes. Yes, come yes. from the brain. Yep. We oftentimes 
characterize it Good as point. weakness. Uh -huh. You just weak. You're not strong enough. You no. can't do this. You can't do that. No, honey. My brain is, totally is wired in such a way. Or my brain has been damaged in such a way that this is how I respond to that damage. Yep. Wow. And you are able to humanize people that way. You are able to connect and stop looking down on people yes. when you understand alcoholism is a chemical imbalance. It is. Yes, it is. It is. Just like heroin addiction is a chemical imbalance. Just like sugar addiction. Sugar is a chemical. Yeah. Really? yeah. I mean, it, it's a drug. It, it really is. is. So, um, I think we got to... And it's a clean drug. Mm -hmm. the, ones yeah. that the ones that are acceptable. Yes, the ones absolutely. That are the clean drug. Do that. And you know what? Church people do it. I'm just going to go mm -hmm. Church people do it more than anybody. Anybody. Uh -huh. And we have got to stop living that way. Correct. Because Christ was not like that. As you know, Rev says all the time, he hung with the hookers, right. prostitutes, mm -hmm. um, drug addicts, tax collectors. Mm -hmm. He hung with thieves, mm -hmm. liars. That's who he hung with because he wanted to show that when he did change their right. life, so he would get all the glory Absolutely. and we forget the whole thing yeah, right. we forget what it's all about it's about living for Christ and that he can change yes, us he can. you know and it, it, it is a true testament and a testimony to what we go through so you yes. your testimony mm -hmm. I'm a testimony and you're a testimony Amen. right and I know in 2012 when I was extremely sick Burn. and was down to 145 pounds and did not know if I was gonna make it or not but God got all the glory mm -hmm. because he turned that situation all the way around. Yes, he did. And he turned your situation yes, he did. all the way around. Right. And yours as well. Amen. And the blessings that come out of it. One thing, it was two things I want to say is when people are going through, and don't give up. Don't give up on yep. them. Just do not yep. give up on them because God ain't gave up on He didn't give up on us. He's still not. So we got to hold each other up. And somebody going through, just do your best to be there for them. Yep. And the other thing was, when I was eating these hostess king dongs, that your uncle was bringing yeah, my uncle brought me every day, every single day. I gained 65 pounds in wow. five months. And I was like, and I was still not processing anything. When I finally come to myself, I was like, really, God? That was your time right there. I should be in the phone by now. What are you doing? <laughs> I should have been real skinny. They said, poor thing, you know she was so sick. Nobody got to say that. <laughs> Nobody got to say that. I was like, but then, <laughs> watch how he did it. He told me, right, he let me see for myself what I was. My husband? Over 20 years, I wouldn't trade him for a million dollars, even if he showed me cash. He wouldn't have been attracted to me Aww. had I got down because, oh, I was, what, 127? Uh -huh. <laughs> if yeah, it wasn't I short did. and tight, it wasn't mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, you owe 200 pounds, short and more tight, uh-uh, uh-uh. So good. I had to come together. I had to come together. Don't cover it up. It's too much. Folks ain't looking at it. So, I thank God for that. Absolutely. Like I said, my husband, mm -mm, he would not have been attractive at all. Because no, 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 it's way too much. And you got all these curves. Completely straight. Ain't no curves nowhere. And mm -mm. Oh. so, thank you, Lord, that you had me cover up some stuff. And that's, and that's how God is. That's he, how he is. He knows what we mm -hmm. need. Mm -hmm. He knows what we mm -hmm. don't. We don't know it. And one thing that you said that I feel convicted right now, mm -hmm. uh, because I have definitely been one to kind of give up on somebody mm -hmm. and um, you know somebody close to me you know mm -hmm. my family and you know like I said you have that family member that has addictions I have situations and yeah. it's so quick to be like man you just write them off I'm done. and I've do done it. it I've done it and I'm convicted now even mm -hmm. as we shoot the show because you have to be careful because Say the same Say that I gave up on him what if Christ gave up on me my lord and um, that addiction is what it is, but it's real. Mm -hmm. And uh, if God can switch your situation, he can change our situation yes. and your situation, then he can change his as well. Amen. So we just have to keep praying yes. and we have to keep yes. working. And that's one another thing that I like about our conversations is because we can be real and transparent. Oh, yeah. And a lot of times that's what, and I'm a little uncomfortable now, but uncomfortability brings change. Yes. And because of this uncomfortableness that I'm feeling, and it's really conviction uh, mm -hmm. from speaking, you know, ill or just saying that, you know, it's not going to change or looking down on him. And, you know, and I just feel really bad about some of the stuff that I've said and I've done, but I know who Christ is. Yes. And um, as long as I continue to ask for forgiveness yes. for that 
and just continue to work and do what it is that he would have me do, then I will understand that, you know, addictions are real. Yes. And if I didn't learn anything else tonight, I definitely learned that addictions are real. Yes, and they can control you deeper than what was surface and what whatever you just don't know. So right. thank you for sharing that and uh yeah. Well the thing about it, he'll give you another chance. Yeah. When you feel like, oh can I mess that up? Yep. He'll give you another chance. Yeah. And when you get it right. Okay, moving on down to number three, I learned that God will provide. Wow. Yes he will. And this one really came because my mom, she has had lupus, pretty much she passed with nine years ago now, but from the time I was nine years old, the world was reversed. I made sure she had a medicine and orange juice every day before I left from sc for school. And she depended on me a lot, which I've got sisters and brothers and stuff, but I was the one she mostly looked to, especially as we got older, because my older sister and brother went to the military and everything, and just she looked to me and was then, you know, with the lupus and everything, she gets so sick and been in the hospital. But during this time right here, <laughs> God held up. I'm telling you, she was there every step of the way, man. She's going to pass out and cry and all that when they get the bad news, you know, mm -hmm. find out something. And, but God kept her to where she could t take care of me mm -hmm. while I was sick. You know, and my aunts and uncles and different ones, but... I thank him that while I needed her, my mom was able to do Amen. all that she could do. Amen. That's a blessing. It was Absolutely. such a blessing. So, Ebony, what's your God will provide story? I know we all got one. <laughs> Just name one. I was going to say, well, it's so hard to do that because that's so the many. story of my life. Yeah. Yes. Um, many of you all know that I was married and divorced early, um, and I had a, a child be well before I was married at 19 right. years old. And I was just sharing with her last week, honey, life will beat you down. Life will beat you down in such a way that you no longer believe what you already know about yourself. Mm -hmm. It will beat you down in such a way where you no longer believe what you know about God mm -hmm. because things can get rough and it can just get, you know, iffy mm -hmm. and touch and go. Um, and so I share with her because we were having a conversation about taking advantage of your youth uh -huh. and how you can you can even get down on yourself and not forgive yourself for all of the opportunities that you've messed yep. up. And I was sharing, being very transparent with my daughter about I did all of that. And I did all of that, thank God, so that you don't have to go through okay. all of that. Yeah. I know what it feels like to love yourself and then not really love yourself no more. Yep because life has dragged you down but i also know thanks be to god that the lord is the lifter of my head yes yes absolutely. and um absolutely he trust in him to provide because when you start dreaming again mm -hmm. you need resources yeah. you need all kinds of things and i started dreaming again yes and life was hard but he always made a way. Yes, he, he always like made um, made put people in my in my way mm -hmm. to help me out, to give me a little extra strength to just go the extra mile. And that all you need is momentum in life. Once okay. you get some momentum, you can really you know start progressing. And so I thank God. My my but God is when I was down to my lowest. He didn't let me stay down. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That said hope too. I like oh, oh yeah. Hope, yeah. Hope, yeah. Hope, oh, yeah. Hope, yes. is the, mm -hmm. hope is the difference between saved being saved and unsaved. Absolutely. It's hope. You know, ain't nothing just doesn't change. We still mm -hmm. got pay our bills. Mm -hmm. We still gonna have problems. We still have situations. But the difference is we have hope. Absolutely. That Christ is gonna help us mm -hmm. through that. Somebody who's unsaved, they just deal with mm -hmm. it. Whatever way that mm -hmm. is. So that's the difference between Christians and mm -hmm. uh, non-Christians is hope mm -hmm. and uh, I know my but God is you know I've talked about it and I promised him if he saved me mm -hmm. then I would always tell the story mm -hmm. every oh, yes. I got oh, yes. so in 2012 when I went in for a simple procedure had a reaction to the anesthesia mm -hmm. ended up with blisters all down my throat with ulcers all down my throat they didn't know what it was they didn't know how to treat it how to solve it so 
medicine is trial and error. Mm -hmm. Doctors practice. Um, and that's what they did. They practiced mm -hmm. on me. And they tried all kind of combinations of steroids and antibiotics. Mm -hmm. And they kept doing it and doing it. it. Kept no, was nothing was working. And I was getting smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. I could eat nothing but watermelon and drink water. Mm -hmm. That's all I could do. And it had to be room temperature because it burned mm -hmm. as it went down. Mm -hmm. So I got down to 145 pounds. And I finally told my mom, and I'll never forget it. So my mom and my sister were taking care of me at the time. And I told her, I said, Mom, I'm tired. I don't want to do it no more. I don't want to go to the hospital. I don't want to do it no more. And my sister said, well, I'll take care of you until I can't. And then the next thing I know, the next day, um, I woke up and I prayed that night. And for the first time, kind of like Ebony said, I felt like I was rock bottom. I wasn't getting no good mm -hmm, news. Mm -hmm. Nothing was changing. But the next day, I had an appetite. Wow. And I ate a little something and it felt better and it didn't hurt like it did. So the good news was that whatever combination was last, it was working. Yeah. And so once that combination worked, then I started to get my weight back and started to feel a little better. And there it was. So Thank God you. showed itself. And then uh, after that, I had some, uh, went to the doctor, wasn't able to use the restroom. Mm. And so in the midst of not being able to use the restroom, you know, a couple of things they thought that either my kidneys had failed or fell in or, you know, I was in stage renal failure. That's what mm -hmm. they thought. I said at 33. So eventually that's not what it was. Thank you. Lord. Um, I was toxic mm -hmm. because my the combinations of medicines and the mm -hmm. trials and errors had caused holes in my uh, lower intestine. Mm -hmm. So long story short, had to remove them. Ended up in a coma for about three days, medicated Jesus. and medically induced coma for yeah. seven days actually, and three I don't recall anything. And um, I remember um, waking up, coming out of mm -hmm. it, and it just like it was a progress, mm -hmm. and it kept going, and I just kept getting better yeah. and better and better. And I said that and shared that because no matter how bleak your situation come looks, on, come on. no matter what happens, no matter even what the doctors say. There is one doctor. Yes, it is. And that is Christ Jesus. And when it's time for you to move forward or move on, and you want to do something different, and you feel like you can't get out of a situation if you're in a slump, if you're depressed, if you're sick, if you got bad news, if you've had some kind of injury, mm -hmm. or something's not going right in your life, that is the time, especially now, for you to spend time with the King. Oh, yeah. With the Master. We talked about it last week about fasting. Mm -hmm. We talked about cleansing yourself, spring cleaning, talking about that. Take this time to get close to him. And whatever's not working in your life, trust that he can fix it and yes. he can help you through it. Oh, yes. Um, so, Lisa, I... Well, then, let's come and take it to the Lord. Come to my mind the other day, because I, I do have a Lexus SUV. I don't know if that. I'm so thankful, nobody but God. Uh, and, you know, my dad always said, oh, you going to go to the dealership because then they'll charge you so much. Mm -hmm. But well, this is a luxury vehicle. I ain't going to have little boo-boo down the mm -hmm. street, you know, up under the hood. Uh -uh. So I said, I think about myself. When I'm upset, I go to the maker who made me. Mm -hmm. So I said, them people that I like Lexus a little bit know more about that car than... Well, you know, well, well done. So I t I'm taking my Lexus to Lexus to live with. Mm -hmm. Like I take my heart and soul to oh the Lord. Mm -hmm. What a good said, analogy. Yeah, and just like he gave me that, he'll give me the money to pay him because I promise you I win that for all change and <clears throat> there's only some guys later. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, it's all right. It's all right. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> but, and that's why they last so long because they have you come back to this 50,000 mile up mm -hmm. yeah yeah and it keeps you running though it's okay thank right. you lord thank you lord so, yeah it's just and it's just about take it to, the lord. It, take it to mm -hmm. him you have to and just in the midst of this and if we don't get anything else across that's what we're saying mm -hmm. you know lessons we learned in life if it if experience is not your teacher then you you going through it for nothing mm -hmm. right i've learned more like we talked the other mm -hmm. week i've learned more from the strenuous things in life, mm -hmm. those stressful things, oh, yeah. those things that hurt. I've learned more from those than I have from my victories. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I have. Because that's why he can't afford to give us sunshine all the time. Mm -hmm. We gotta right. have some rain. We gotta have some pain. 
we gotta have some situations that's gonna make us struggle. Mm -hmm. Number one, because mm -hmm. we it reminds us that we need Him. Mm -hmm. That yeah. nothing that we do is of our own strength and of our own being. It's because of the Creator and our Master, and that's King Jesus. Oh yes. We just gonna give the three today. We'll do three, and then okay. we'll come back next week and kind of round with the four. Yeah. You have any last thoughts? Um, uh, my last thoughts. I just revisited what you were talking about how your mother had been sick literally most of your life oh yeah but when you got sick he kept her he kept her like wow. i think i missed it at first yeah but you got it but then i got it like hmm that goes to show you the the, the efficacy of god yeah. oh yeah that goes to show you um just how um omniscient he is and how powerful he is that, that he that could us. make it all work together yeah she yeah. has to take care of her baby girl mm -hmm. and so even if i just give her this portion of health and strength mm -hmm. to get through this she's gonna have this right. portion of health and strength because we can't as a mother mm -hmm. i can't imagine having a sick daughter and not being able to take care wow. of her right yep. And your mother felt the same way through rheumatoid arthritis, right. through lupus, yes. through a headache, mm -hmm. through um, swollen ankles, whatever yes. it was. She oh, didn't man. want anything to get in the way of her taking care of her child. Wow. And the Lord provided her that. Yes, he and did. I'm sure it was hard, but it was her pleasure. Absolutely. And so um, I think that's beautiful that um, the Lord will stretch the stuff out, out make it work, Rony. and for our benefit. Yes. So I, I think that is beautiful, and that's something to remind, to to keep in your mind because life will present some situations to you, and you'll say, "I don't have the time for this. I don't have the energy for this. I don't have the skill set for this." Right. And the Lord said, "Uh-uh. Seek my face in your weakness." That's right. I my strength is made perfect. My strength. And so my I think, yes. oh my God, thank you, Jesus, mm -hmm. that. Your mother is a shining example yes, of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That is, I mean, that, and you know, it's just funny. This is why I like this. Like I said, we have conversations about practical things, and look what has evolved from this. Lessons learned from Lisa's sickness that we can all apply to our daily life. Well, we're about out of time for this show, and we're definitely going to come back next week to finish. So you've got to come back and tune in so you can hear the rest of this and Lisa's other four lessons that she learned in life to help her get through this. Oh, um, we'll say last thoughts, but we got another show. Yeah. So okay. we'll give it to that. So we'll have a word of prayer right now, and then we'll get ready for to say goodbye to you and to say thank you for tuning in again. And please continue to share this video. Continue to share this. Don't keep it to yourself. You know, let us know if it's something else you want us to talk about mm -hmm. and talk through our conversation you want to have. Hit us up on Facebook. Uh, or just whatever you want to do. Just let us know. Right over to the church. Call the church. Whatever you need to do. Uh, we just thank God for this platform and this opportunity to share with you. So let us pray. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank, thank you for being God. Thank you for being good. And thank you for our experiences, being able to teach us how to move forward, how to go on. And God, to keep that internal faith foul that you've blessed us oh, with, yes. that we can continue to go back to those things that we know that only come from mm -hmm. you, that yeah. only you can fix, that only you can turn around, mm -hmm. that only you can make better. So God, forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings. Forgive us for those times that we've either looked down on people or that we didn't think about people addiction and things that hold them back. Uh, why people are just the way they are. Mm -hmm. God, just forgive us yes, God. for just being judgmental and trying to take your seat when mm -hmm. you are the only judge. Oh, yeah. God, forgive us of that right now. And God, if you would just bless us to have another chance. And oh, thank you for thank being you, able God. to take this test over mm -hmm. and over again in this thing called life, God. God, just thank you for being God. Thank you for being good. And thank you for blessing us. Thank you for joining us today. All of those who are listening, we ask that you bless everybody who watch and touch them in a special way. In Christ Jesus' name, we pray and it's all these things this day. Amen. Amen and amen. And that's a wrap. Thank you for tuning in.